Hi, this is Dave Parker with Compton EdTech, and today I'm going to go through a couple of really simple movement blocks using Scratch. Now, if you have watched so far my uh, videos on changing sprites and sprites, you'll know why I have the Green Lantern and Scratch Cat in a different backdrop. If you haven't seen those, please go back through my channel and watch those videos uh, on changing sprites and backdrops. That'll help you understand what's going on here. But right now I have uh, the Green Lantern, John Stewart, my favorite, one of my favorite characters in all of comicdom and Scratch Cat because it's his show. And you'll notice I have Scratch Cat select whoever I have selected, their icon appears in blue. So what I'm going to do is to apply some motion to this character and move him across the screen. So what we need for that over here, we'll say, see over to the left, we'll see our movement or our motion blocks. Now, there are a variety of these that you can use. If you're using them in the context of telling a story, you can ask characters move across the screen, change backgrounds when they get to the screen. There are different ways that you can do that. I'm going to go over a very brief primer of this, but for more details, you can go through and watch uh, some of the Scratch tutorials, which you will find right here. So this is not an extensive, this is just a very simplistic way of using these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the Green Lantern John Stewart right here, and I'm going to apply some motion to him. So first, he's a little bit large for this backdrop, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink him in size. I'm going to take him to about 75% of this size, 75, put that in, and that works there maybe 50 let's take him down to 50 because he's you know in space where there you go that's perfecto and scratch cat i'm just going to say goodbye to him for right now this will be the green lantern show so in space i'm going to move him over here and i'm going to move him from right from the left side of this planet to the right side so i'm going to take this movement block here and it says move 10 steps so I'm saying, okay, move, move. Well, in order for things to move, we have to have an event that triggers them to move. So you'll notice the events and the events key or the events block fits right in here on the top. So what we'll do, we'll go through here and we'll find an event block to trigger that. And so we're going to use when the green flag is chosen. As you notice, as you know, the green flag is right here. And so when we trigger the event, that's what's going to happen. So in order to see this a little bit better, I'm going to increase the width of the screen. So I'm going to make this take up the whole of the screen and I'm going to click the green flag. And wow, he moved a little bit. So knowing how that worked. So now I'm going to say, all right, he moved 10 steps and I got a pretty good sense of the scale. What happens if I move him 100 steps? So with code, remember, it's a lot of, there's a lot of trial and error involved. You're not usually gonna get it right on the first time. You try it a few times and see what happens. So this time I'm gonna put him on 100. Let's expand that screen and let's click and trigger the event. And he moves 100, that, that was great. So I've got a basic event to trigger the movement of this Green Lantern. So we can't just have him just move there. I'm going to reset him. I'm going to move him. And then I'm going to have him turn and move in a different direction. So I'm going to move. Then he's going to turn 15 degrees. And then I'm going to move him another 100 steps. Okay. So again, I can continue to add these code, these bits of code here and see what my results are. So here, the triggering event, he's here, let's trigger it. So you see he ended up in a little bit of a curve, okay? So that's a very basic movement. And, you know, I could do something if for the math in me, I'm gonna take this code out. I'm gonna have him turn uh, 90 degrees and then move another 100 steps so uh, let's see what that how that changes 
We're going to move him. Let me put him back to a starting point. Do, 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 do. So let's see. When I click him and move, trigger, boom. And now he's way down here. Okay. So, okay. Well, what if I have him move 90 degrees, 100, 90 degrees, one? What if I have him do that four times? Well, you, that means I'd have to type this code, blah, blah, blah. And that would get kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another operation. I'm going to go and look for a repeat. Now here, when I add a control option in, this gives me a, a level of, you know, being able to stop him, move him a different way, or in the case of repeat, it keeps me from having to type code over and over again. So I'm going to slide this repeat code into this, and I want him to repeat this. I'm going to change that indicator to four times. And we're going to trigger this with the flag. Okay. So I'm going to reposition John. I'm going to turn him a few degrees. And let's see what we get when we do this. Uh, it's fine. So here, let's expand it. And I'm going to trigger it. Watch what happens. Wow. You're saying, how did that happen, Mr. Parker? Well, I triggered, I told him to do 90 degrees, turn, 90 degrees, turn, 90 degrees, turn, 90. So if I do that, 90, deg 90 degrees times four is 360 degrees. He just did a complete circle. Oh, yeah, you see where math comes in. So don't forget your math. Don't forget all those other things that you've learned. Put everything that you got together. So there are other controls that you can add. Um, to this, tinker around, look at them and see what you can do and what you can integrate into your code. I hope this helps. This is Dave Parker with Compton Ed Tech. Have a great day.